Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I've got a bit of a different video for you. I just got thinking about my sense of smell and what makes people like some perfumes and what makes other people not like them. And just the diversity amongst us in what we like and our preferences. And actually I got reading and then I thought, you know, I bet other people are curious too. So I made this video. So I've got 10 facts for you about your sense of smell and what makes you love things and others not. So fact one, humans have over 10 million smell receptors in their noses over about around a five centimetre squared area in the top of their nasal passages. These smell receptors act together to enable you to sense over one trillion different odours. And when you think about it, 10 million, it sounds a lot, doesn't it? But dogs have around one billion odour receptors and for particular types of dogs such as bloodhounds that have been specifically bred for their ability to smell things they actually have four billion odour receptors in their noses so we are nothing in this animal kingdom with our, with our sense of smell. So what allows us to smell? Well we have these smell receptors that are encoded by around 400 different genes so not only do we have 400 different genes but also those genes have a great variation in their sequences and also not all of them are expressed in every single person. So if you compare two different people and their, their smell receptors, one person and the other person will have a difference of between 15 to 30 percent in their smell receptors which means that everybody perceives smells quite differently to another person. So a great example of the genetics of odour receptors and how certain populations smell certain smells better than other populations is looking at the Icelandic population. So the Icelandic population is quite an isolated population. They're an island. There's, there's not been much kind of mixing with other populations over the years. Overall, Icelandic people compared to the rest of the world have a very high tolerance of a rotten fish smell. And that may be evolutionarily from times when avoiding rotten fish would mean you would go hungry in Iceland. And so they may have developed this ability to overcome the disgust from the rotten fish smell to enable them to eat the fish and survive. So this variation in their perceiving of scents is surely why we all like different things. So fact two, women on average have a greater sense of smell than men. So they can smell more different scents and they just have a more sensitive nose. And that is because women have a larger prefrontal orbital complex in their brain. So that bit of the brain is this bit just above your eyes just here and that is the bit that is important for smell. The greatest development of this part of the brain has been linked with women having to select mates so they are looking for someone who is genetically fit who is going to make their children the best they can be and studies of women have shown that in blind tests where they are just given a t-shirt worn by a man they innately prefer the t-shirt that has been worn by the man with the most symmetrical face, which sounds ridiculous, but actually symmetry is a sign of genetic fitness. And clearly those men are giving off different smells, which I find absolutely fascinating. It's also thought that women's greater sense of smell is linked to their nurturing needs. So women are the ones that have babies and in order to bond and realize what is wrong or right with their babies, and a heightened sense of smell is likely to be important in that. So smell is also more sensitive during pregnancy and that is likely to be again for evolutionary reasons. So um, avoiding certain foods when pregnant would have meant that the, the child would be more likely to be healthy because the woman wouldn't have suffered any kind of infections from any kind of food poisoning or any toxins. So there's clearly a reason why your sense of smell is heightened during pregnancy and why you would choose to avoid certain smells or foods because smell is one of the ancient warning signs for your body. So fact three, smell is also the oldest sense that we have. So both in evolution terms and also in terms of when we develop senses. In evolutionary terms, even the simplest organisms have something called chemosensation, which is an early form of smelling. Smell is the first sense you develop in the womb. So fact four, it's also possible for us to smell feelings. Yes, we can smell feelings. So there have been studies done where men have been asked to wear t-shirts and then asked to watch films. And they watched three different films, so different men, different films. And these men were randomly allocated to either a neutral kind of feeling film, a film that should impart feelings of disgust, 
and a film that should impart feelings of fear to the men. And then these t-shirts were taken off the men and given to women and women were asked to smell the t-shirts and their reactions were recorded on camera. And actually the women who had the t-shirts from the fearful men had wider eye movements. So their eyes actually raised as if they were expecting danger, that kind of fearful feeling, like they were empathizing with that smell that they could sense the men had fear. And the women who smelt the t-shirts from the men who'd watched the disgusting film, they had that kind of facial movement that would suggest disgust of. So it's clear that smell can induce empathy in others. Other feelings that have been shown to be imparted through smell are happiness and sexual arousal. So it really does matter how you smell. Fact five, smell is the only one of your senses that can regenerate. So the sensory cells in your nose turn over every 30 to 60 days. Fact six, your peak smelling age is around 18 or 19 years. From then on, it's all decline, I'm afraid. And your smell is also affected by the environment. So you smell better in damper conditions. So you might smell better in the summer and the spring rather than the autumn and the winter. And also you are able to smell much better when you've been exercising. And that may be because of the increased blood flow through the nose and also the fact that you're breathing more heavily. So your nose will have a moister environment within it for you to be able to sense smells. Fact seven, smell is your most memorable sense. In studies, when people looked at uh, visual recall after three months, accuracy was around 50%. Whereas when they looked at smell recall, after one year, the accuracy was 65%. So smell really is the most memorable sense. Fact eight, we don't smell when we're asleep. So our bodies don't see the point of keeping smell active as a sense. So they just shut it down. And so this is basically a warning to everyone to get a smoke alarm. Please get a smoke alarm. Please make sure there are batteries in it because the smell of smoke is not going to wake you up. Fact nine, we're all familiar with people on YouTube talking about being an anosmic to certain smells or anosmic to a certain perfume. That anosmia is a thing. You can be born and not be able to smell and you can also develop anosmia. You can also develop hyposmia, which indicates a reduced ability to smell, or you can develop parosmia, where your sense of smell changes. You can also develop phantosmia, where you smell things that don't exist. You have phantom smells. And most worryingly of all, you can develop something called cacosmia. So cacosmia is where you actually find smells that are normally pleasant, such as baked goods, unpleasant and you detect those as rancid or putrid odours. So I feel very sorry for anybody with cacosmia. It must be awful. Interestingly, anosmia is actually an early warning sign for diseases such as Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. So if you experience any change in your sense of smell, please, please check it out. Fact 10, probably one we mostly know. Um, so smell is very related to your sense of taste. And that is because as you chew, the odour chemicals from your food are produced and they move into the back of your nose. So you are actually smelling your food as you are tasting it with your tongue. And it's the combined effects of smelling it and also tasting it that give you your overall impression. So both senses are completely crucial to how you perceive foods and how much you enjoy foods. And we've seen this, haven't we, in COVID where people have lost their sense of smell and therefore also lost their sense of taste. And even with a mild cold, you might lose your sense of smell and sense of taste in a small way. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and please consider subscribing because I do a lot of perfume videos and I'm also really into science. So I would love to have a chat with you in the comments about this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.